Cruise Control streams live every Saturday starting at 10 a.m. Eastern. Watch us live on Facebook and YouTube. Details are in this podcast's episode information. About new and used cars. Control. Industry news. We'll fix or repair your car on the air. Control. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the wheel. Now, your ride is about to begin. Control. Because you're on cruise control. Cruise control. Cruise control. That's right, your ride is beginning right now. Hello, everyone. It's Fred Staub and Les Jackson, and we are here to bring you a great hour of automotive news and entertainment. Les, there's so much going on in the auto industry. We've got a lot of vehicle reveals. We've got racing at Le Mans. Yep. We're, we're celebrating the 32, uh, the Deuce The 32 Ford, 90 years of hot riding, a lot going on. Isn't it true? Boy, it's really true. And, uh, the you know, the the whole industry just keeps shifting and changing every week. Um, It's it's, just think about the back to the beginning of the year, how things have changed. So, yeah, they they uh, certainly going on. They certainly have. And we're going to start this hour with, as I said, new vehicles and uh, new technology, Toyota takes the wrap off its supersized Sequoia, their big three-row SUV. And big. for something a little smaller, they also reveal the hybrid edition of the Corolla Cross. Absolutely. And you probably wonder, what are the best car colors to buy to avoid depreciation? Well, we have the results of a new study, and pink is not one of them. <laughs> no, that's right. And <laughs> Honda announces their brand new HRV. It's got more power, more technology. It's bigger. And I think people are going to be pretty happy with this. It's a real competitor now to the compact SUV or CUV market. That's right. Uh, and Hertz, remember Hertz? Yeah, they're back <laughs> in business. I don't know if I don't know if they have any cars Mark, to rent. Mark anyway, Fields is running it. He used to run for That's Ford. right. And Mark's a good guy. Uh, we know him. Uh, they have teamed up with Polestar to put uh, electric cars in the dream fleet. Yeah, they're going to talk about that. And then talking tech, uh, we're going to look at some technology where Toyota has passenger safety on its radar. And we'll tell you all about yes. that. Yeah, it's cool. So we have a lot going on. We're going to talk a little later about how a riding lawnmower might be giving us a look into the future of charging those electric vehicles. Uh, Just stuff everywhere. And I'll have a review of the Kia K5 GT line, all-wheel drive, a little bit later on. But you're going to have a review of the... um, Mustang Mach E, and you got some right. pretty interesting takes on it. We're, I'm interested well, to hear what you think on that one. Yep, it's uh, it's kind of a lot of a lot of good and a lot of not so good, but I'll cover it. All right, all right. Well, that sounds great. We appreciate you being with us on Cruise Control. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. Don't forget to check us out cruisecontrolradio.com or all our Facebook and uh, Mm -hmm. YouTube pages and more. We will be right back after the break, so stay tuned. Cruise Control is your on-air automotive magazine. Check us out at cruisecontrolradio.com. Cruise Control. And we are back. I'm Les. He's Fred. And you know us. We're here every week. And as usual, we've got a bunch of stuff to cover. So let's start, Fred, with the uh, new Sequoia. Yeah. Because if you're going to start, you may as well start big. (laughs) Yeah. Go big or go home. (laughs) Yes. That's it. Yeah. Reveal this week the all new 2023 Sequoia full size SUV. This is one large customer, this thing. Three rows, of course. It is assembled in the U.S. at the Toyota Motor Manufacturing Plant in Texas, in San Antonio. Uh, Big trend, by the way, white vehicles, polar white, refrigerator white, appliance white vehicles with black wheels like that last shot. Um, 
I actually have a, uh, a GMC AT4 that's like that right now. But um, starting MSRP 58,300, it's, uh, it's pulled along by a 437 horsepower, 583 pound-feet of torque engine, maximum towing capability, 9,520. Um, so, well, that's, you know, that's, that's big towing. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, this, is, all of them get powered by the I force max, which is a twin turbocharged V six 10 speed automatic behind all of them. And the engine mm. features a unique motor generator within the bell housing between the twin turbo engine and that 10 speed automatic. Uh, this is a, this is a big big machine it really is uh three rows five grades of you know luxury um they will be fitted with the multi the brand new multimedia system that was first launched on the tundra and it has either uh, by a, it has both a large eight inch or available 14 inch touch screen and uh, it's got things like wireless Android Auto and yeah. Apple CarPlay. You can just say simple phrases like, hey, Toyota, and wake the system up. All the active safety systems. Um, it is a big machine. Uh, I wonder if you get the top of the line grade, the, the top of the grade, the capstone luxury, uh, what this would cost. It would be certainly more... Than fifty-eight thousand, when you say, I think it's safe to say nobody's going to be buying one of these for fifty-eight thousand in the near future. Do you think? Do you think, like we've seen with, um, you look at the Jeep Wagoneer, and you look at, yeah. do you think they're going to build an even larger version of this, like Jeep well, has done? I, if if not larger, uh, maybe um, so optioned up. <laughs> beyond but, that uh, capstone luxury grade right? yeah i think i think all of these manufacturers want these things to be a hundred thousand dollars or more yeah yeah um, and you know i don't know what they charge for the captain's reclining captain's chairs in the in the second row <laughs> but you know that that's not a cheap option well it comes with an actual captain so to steer this oh, ship okay. around well yes you have to he has to have seamanship papers <laughs> yeah so yeah. Uh, large obviously this is great if you're towing a boat if you're towing a horse trailer if you're towing an rv um and you need you know a lot of room and a lot of luxury to do it so uh this has been a big Big thing for Jeep, as I said, the Wagoneer that that has become, you know, the big deal, and they, in a sense, it kind of competes too with the Escalade. The Escalade is probably yeah. the oldest style of all these large SUVs out there, even though it's been refreshed. But it's still, you know, kind of a traditional style, and they sell them. They sell a lot of them, and they're all big money. They uh, do. Yeah, it's. Um, it's it's a machine, but but what if you want something a little bit less large, less? And we're going to talk about this next one. I like this, the Toyota Corolla Cross, because you know why? We always talk about it on the show. My Pontiac vibe is based on very, the Corolla, and this is yep. sort of the this is very sort of similar. The, yeah, very similar. It is based on a Toyota Corolla. And uh, they've come out with the hybrid version. We knew this was coming because it's been around in other countries around the world. And the nice thing about this, the Corolla Cross in the traditional form only has, I think, about 169 horsepower. People have said not fast. This hybrid has 194 horsepower, eight seconds, zero to 60 time. And That's respectable. Gets a manufacturer estimated thirty-seven miles combined per gallon for for all grades, and that's with all-wheel drive. So we're going to talk a little bit more about this Corolla Cross when we come back. So stay tuned to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. We are just getting started, so stay tuned. We will be right back.
Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. Before the break, we were talking about the Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid, 37 miles to the gallon. Got all the safety features. It's got uh, a number of grades uh, of trim. Uh, I believe there are four grades, if I'm right. Nope, more than uh, that. L E, yeah. X L E, S, S S E, and X S E. X S E. Soft Tex trim seats, mm-hmm. uh, which is sort of a, a pretend leather, but it's really nice. Uh, standard wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Yay, Toyota. Remember for the longest time, they just would do. Apple CarPlay, and if you didn't have an Apple phone, you were out of luck, but they decided, uh, they realized that was a problem. Now, they're doing wireless um, compatibility uh, on some of the uh, less expensive vehicles. We don't know what this one will cost. It's got a 4G hotspot, standard Toyota safety sense. Um, I'm I'm excited to drive this. Like I said, it's sort of like the modern day version of the Pontiac Vibe. (laughs) Um, That's, you know, and the Corollas are very pleasant to drive. You know, they don't feel like a little car. No. Um, and, and everything's bigger, of course, but 37 miles to the gallon. Also, you can yeah. get two tone. I like the two tone paint. Um, they have one that's sort of a tan. They call it acid dipped. Um, so, yeah, there's another one I like called wind chill. Wind chill. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect if like you're that. a weather forecaster. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we know pricing, and I'm sure you and I will get into that and give it an at-the-wheel review when it becomes available, right? I'd go for the hybrid. How about you? Well, yeah, um, I think it just makes sense, especially uh, in this day and age yeah. with $5 gas. You know, uh, if you're going to buy a new vehicle, get a hybrid. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, if you are going to buy a new vehicle, what color do you get, Les Jackson? Uh, it, remember the time when all press cars were silver? Every one I, of them was silver, and we were like, what's yep. going on here? We used to make jokes about, yeah, apparently, they ran out of all other colors. Because <laughs> this was for years. You can in have the it early in 2000s. any color as long as it's silver. Everything was silver. And they, they kept saying, well, it's the it photographs well, the best. Yeah, you can see the lines and things. Well, yeah. iccars.com did a study about vehicle depreciation by color and ranked them by the lowest to the highest depreciation. And it's kind of surprising here, (laughs) some of the colors. Uh, So from the lowest to the highest, the highest depreciating color is brown. You don't want to go back to that uh, earth tone days of the 70s. It's earth shoes. It's depressing, I think. (laughs) Yeah. Although I did have a root beer brown uh, Escalade to drive. I thought that was pretty nice. But yeah. Now, gold is number 13. We were just looking at a sort of a gold, goldish tan in, um, in that uh, Corolla Cross. Uh, black, believe it or not, black depreciates. It's number 12 out of the list. I'm, I am glad of that because, as you know, I just don't like black cars. Mm. I just think it's a terrible color for a car. It's... That always looks dirty because it shows dirt. It shows uh, it doesn't show the lines. Mm-hmm. Um, it's I just think it's a terrible color. Now, what's interesting is I see cars number ten out of the rank of fourteen colors for depreciation is silver. Maybe it's just because yeah. there's so many cars out there that are silver. I think that's true, and a lot of them are grayish silver, mm-hmm. which uh, you know still depreciates number nine the exciting beige kind of you can wear your beige uh, yes. uh, le- leisure suit while you sit in your beige <laughs> vinyl seat yeah i i have a, go, a beige nehru jacket <laughs> there you go you could wear that 60. you could wear that and and depreciate yeah. at uh three years uh you four, by 14.4 percent you're right ic cars.com study 
Um, and then gray. I like some of these grays. Um, the car I'm going to review this week is the gray, but they say that uh, that depreciates. That's number seven on the list. And then blue. I I always I'm just a fan of blue. I like blue. Well, I, I think blue remains a pretty popular color. Yeah, obviously, I, I, I like them both, light or dark blue. You know, sometimes yeah. the navy blues look nice, don't they? Oh yeah. Um, green. I never green. You know, it's interesting. I never understood British racing green because green was always thought of as a hard luck color for race cars. You never want to make well, a Well, of course, there are four different British racing greens depending on the company manufacturing the car. Okay. You know, Triumph is different from MG, which is different from Jaguar. Um, I, I've always liked green cars, but I like a deep, dark, slightly metallic greens. All right. Here's a safe bet. Red at number four hmm. still depreciates 14%. Then well, the average depreciation is 15. So, all right. So it's a little bit less. Purple. Yeah. Have you? I seen, don't get it. Have you seen purple <laughs> factory cars? Do they make I, those? Well, Dodge. Oh, Dodge you know. does. Yeah. Um, but I don't get that. What, purple's not by any means a popular color, it's certainly out there. It's certainly out there. It's yeah. not like if you said, well, I want to order a mainstream car. By the way, no. we may have jumped over a number 11 white. I've never been a fan of white cars. They always look like a fleet car to me. Yeah, uh, I, I will say I, from a practical standpoint, I like white because You've had some white. it's You've comfortable had in the Corvette. summer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, now, so least depreciating number one and two, orange. Don't get it. That was a big, remember that copper color yeah. orange was a big thing a few years ago? And that uh, Nissan old still Corvette built a lot of war them. bonnet yellow. Oh, which was I hated orange. that. Oh, a terrible color. I had a car that was sort of close to that and it looked faded. And I was like, this looks faded. Yeah. So I painted it yeah. blue. But uh, a yellow is the number one least appreciating color. I don't understand that. I wouldn't buy like a yellow Corvette. People like that. Remember when they had the Ronald McDonald Corvette? It was bright red seats. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember well, one drove past us at Carlisle and someone said it looked good. It's like, get your eyes checked, man. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Can you drive the, can you, can you work the three pedals with the clown shoes on? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, yellow. I don't know. I, I don't, honestly, I don't know anybody that likes a yellow car. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that had a 3% depreciation according to iccars.com of 4.5%. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, maybe there are people out there that like yellow. What What do you think? Let us know in the comments <laughs> if uh, what your favorite color is. I think you're pretty much safe with red, black, silver, uh, and probably white. That's Those are yep. the most popular colors, I believe. Um, you can't go wrong with red. I like red. Uh, well, they call it resale red for resale a good reason. Resale red. Yeah, it pops. It pops. Redwood black wheels. I like redwood black wheels. And uh, either a saddle or a gray interior. Yeah, that's nice. Although I have to say, I, I do like some BMWs that are the dark metallic blue with the saddle interior. Yeah, I like that. And I've seen some Mercedes where they're very nautical. They have this light blue leather interior with that dark metallic blue. It seems nautical to me somehow. I don't know why. Well, of course, I live for the sea. So. <laughs> and the dance. We know that, Les Jackson. And the dance. <laughs> yeah. We, <laughs> hey, we're glad you're along with us uh, for this ride on Cruise Control. We're having fun, so we hope you're having fun, too. Don't forget to check us out. Uh, you can look at our YouTube page or Facebook page. Mm -hmm. All those links are on cruisecontrolradio.com. Coming up, we're going to talk about Nissan Altima. Uh, yes, Nissan still makes great sedans, and they've revised this one. We'll tell you all about it when we come back. And also, uh, we're going to talk tech about lawnmowers and how they might kind of forecast the future of electric vehicles. What are we talking about? We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. We are live every Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern 
Watch us on Facebook and YouTube. Details are in this podcast episode information. Cruise Control. Hey, welcome back to Cruise Control. I'm Les. That guy is Fred, and we're going to talk about a car. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Uh, yeah, a sedan. You know, Good. remember remember those? What? What are you yeah. talking about? You no, know, it you know, it's kind of low. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And easy remember. to get into. I kind of remember those days. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the Nissan Altima, which is has always been a really good mid-sized car. Yeah. Remember uh, and the, how long ago, Les, were mid-sized sedans the big thing we talked about and very competitive? Everyone was always bringing out a new vehicle. It was the biggest segment. Yeah. The, the hardest, most competitive segment. And that was up through, certainly through 2010. Interesting. Um, and it maybe even 2012 or so. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden things started happening, but fortunately <laughs> the people at Nissan said, yeah. Hey, we make a good one. People like it. It's reliable. We're going to make it. Okay. And the interesting thing here is it is available with all wheel drive. So that's not an issue. Yeah, that's right. If you like all wheel drive. Would you get and, a sedan with all-wheel drive? Well, I, I wouldn't spend extra money for it around here in the Mid-Atlantic because, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm fine without it. If I lived up there in the Northeast with you, yeah, yeah. for sure. Okay. Well, um, What's cool about the Altima, which is, again, sedans are not real popular. They've got eight different models. That's crazy. That's well, of course, all wheel drive, front wheel drive, so on. But sure, S S V S R S L S R V C Turbo <laughs> front wheel drive. <laughs> that, well, you've lost me by by now. <laughs> yeah, uh, these are these. This is the new model for 2023. It will be available in the fall. New exterior colors, new materials. Upgraded technology, a 12.3-inch HD color display, uh, Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay. Sounds like Android Auto is still plugged in and Apple CarPlay is wireless. Yeah. Although you can get adapters for that now so to make it wireless. Um, So let's talk about engines here. You get a choice of two four-cylinders, a two-liter variable compression engine. I drove a couple of vehicles with this. Not a bad engine at all. And a uh, advanced 2.5 liter double overhead cam engine. Um, and they say that uh, they give the performance of six cylinders, but with four cylinder fuel economy. Uh, it looks like the, uh, the variable compression turbo engine requires 93 octane, delivers 248 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque, that is using uh, that higher octane fuel, right? Thirty four on the highway, twenty nine combined. Not bad. Yeah, but the base engine uh, is is really impressive at twenty eight city and thirty nine highway. Yeah, and then you, know, you got to look at that carefully. Yeah, you got to look, look at that carefully. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, it gets Pro Pilot assist which works really well um, steering the car with radar sensors and electronic uh, control modules. Uh, I've used it on some rainy nights where it just holds the lane really well, especially when you can't see the lines. It's not going to, it's not, (laughs) you can't sit back and take a nap, but it's it's not for reading the newspaper. No, but it does help you. It does. It it does. does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm kind of interested to drive this. I think it, I think it will be good. I love those wheels. I think that's a really nice factory wheel. Design. I do. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's becoming rare that you and I both like the same wheel. Yeah. Uh, Very luxurious it's interior. It's nice. It's really nice. Yeah. Nice stuff. Okay. Well, we'll be reviewing that as well when it comes out. Um, and I think that's that's interesting stuff. Now uh, we were talking about Le Mans. Uh, underway uh, 
as we speak. And um, we should talk a little bit about what Cadillac's doing there with their Project GTP, their hypercar, uh, which will be uh, running in 2023. It will contest the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship and the FIA World Endurance Championship, including the 24 Hours of Le Mans. It won't be there this year. They just revealed it. Sure, sure looks Corvette-y. Well, listen to this. The new race car will be powered by the all-new 5.5-liter double overhead cam V8. Isn't that the one that's going in the Z06? Uh, Seems to me it is, yeah. My theory is we may be looking at a a revved-up version of a C8-based car that will be sold by Cadillac. Well, you know, it, this this gives Corvette the best of all worlds because for a number of years now, Corvette has become a world-class car mm-hmm. without exception. But, but it's still kind of considered an American muscle car. Mm. You know? And what this Cadillac... Cat- catavet <laughs> uh, would be is is the you know the world class corvette based expensive uh car that that would make the corvette division and the cadillac division um a lot of money and a lot of reputation yes i mean just look looking at this vehicle you could adapt yeah. this. Look at it. It has the form factor, mid-engine form factor. Especially yep. when you look from above, you would make the passenger compartment wider. You would make the fenders enclosed. And uh, you would not have, unfortunately, that big tail on the back, which looks great. looks like a vertical stabilizer from an airplane. It, <laughs> it, yeah, it actually looks like a, one of the old British Vulcan bombers from yeah. the back. I love that look. Oh, well, it's cool. I mean, that is a neat looking car. But uh, I think that's what we're seeing. Now, am I going too far saying that? I think I think this Project GTP is not only a race car, but it will be the basis of a C8 based, very high end, $200,000 yep. limited edition um Cor- uh, uh, Corvette-based Cadillac. I completely agree. Yeah. It, it, it just makes sense in every way. Yeah. And, um, you know, as we move to electric, it will be electric. I don't know when it will happen. If there it probably won't be a gas version of it. I'll, I'll, I'll put on my pronosticator hat. It probably won't happen until the Corvette changes over to electric power. Because I don't, I think Cadillac yeah. wants to go all electric. I think they're probably not going to build a gas version of it. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know. What do you think? Well, I think maybe the Cadillac uh, version, Corvette-based version, uh, will be the experimental uh, models for electric power, and yeah. I think it'll it'll then pass down from Cadillac to Corvette. Interesting. You're interesting. So you're saying that will be the first electric powered Corvette. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting stuff, Les Jackson. Well, let's talk a little tech. <laughs> this is bizarre because we like to get bizarre <laughs> sometimes here. Honda's new lawnmower may influence electric vehicles. Their new riding lawnmower. They have, uh, Honda loves to play around with mowers. They have a thing called the Mean Mower, which has a 200 yep. horsepower Fireblade engine and can run at 151 miles an hour. I picture cutting grass that fast. You'd be done in minutes, right? Not well. You'll be dead in minutes. <laughs> that that um, turn at the end of your property before the fence will be hard. That's right. Um, I I'm not. Who would ride a a, a I don't care how modified it is. A, a mower uh, at 151 miles an hour. Not me, but uh, Car Buzz, mm-hmm. our friends over at Car Buzz, they have their person in the United States patent office, and they suggest that Honda is working on an autonomous travel working machine, which is some kind of generic language. 
which has the ability to travel to a charging station all by itself. And as far as they can determine, car buzz, hmm. it is a electric riding lawnmower that when it needs to charge, it will just drive itself over and and charge up its battery. This is very much like the Roombus. They yeah, go back to the uh, yeah. docking station and they charge up. And this was thought that when we have fully autonomous vehicles in the future, uh, they may, one use for this might be to tell parents that your child has arrived at the uh, final location, yep. or, or they could just go off an electric vehicle and charge itself when you're, you know, have it parked at the train station or something, and then return to the parking space. So, a little bit of a talking tech. When we come back, Les is going to review the Mach E Mustang. He's got some interesting takes on it. So, stay tuned to Cruise Control. We'll be right back. Cruise Control is your on air automotive magazine. Check us out at cruisecontrolradio.com. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control. I. I'm going to give an at-the-wheel review right now of the Mustang Mach-E. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a week in it and uh, rang it out <laughs> pretty well, friend. <laughs> what uh, one did my, you have, Les? Uh, I had the uh, premium uh, all-wheel drive, which uh, is kind of rare for the Mid-Atlantic. Um Rapid red metallic exterior, black perforated Active X, which is kind of a fake leather uh, interior. Nice, nice upholstery, comfortable. Um, it's it's a Mustang. I mean, when you, I know there, there's a lot of people talking about. Well, it's not really a Mustang. It's an SUV. No, when you when you look at it from the outside, you get in and you sit down. It feels Mustangy. Mm-hmm. Uh, if that's a word, uh, it feels much smaller, feels smaller inside. Yeah. Like you're driving a, you know, a, f- a four, s- a four seat uh, sports car, mm-hmm. uh, sports sedan. Mm-hmm. Um, and this has the optional uh, 88 kilowatt uh, extended life battery. What kind of range does that give you? 305 miles. Yeah, that's plenty. <clears throat> uh, plenty. Absolutely plenty. Um, now, is it fast? You betcha. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's you. If you stand on this thing, you'd you'd better have some horizon in front of you. I'm just and, showing, and no no police around you. I'm just showing the one I drove, which was the first edition yep. in that blue grabber blue. Actually, and that's a very pretty blue. I like that. Oh, I, I painted a car that color. It wasn't a Mustang Mach E, though. They didn't exist back then. Yeah, it's cool. So, um, as you said in your review, you know, you had all of the usual um, features that you expect in any decent um, modern vehicle today. Um, now, some of the things that that I found really uh useful and and kind of fun uh the phone key mm-hmm. you, you you set it up oh yeah so you can talk to the car through your phone yep tell it to start tell it to pre-air condition whatever um and the one pedal driving did you do that i love one pedal driving on on electric vehicles i really enjoy yeah. it it's like a golf cart basically well it's and it's in traffic you know i drove into dc Mm-hmm. Uh, with it in the middle of the day, uh, it's awfully nice just to be using one pedal. I agree. I love it. Uh, and it's, you know, as soon as you let up on the pedal, it stops. Boy, does it stop. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. It stopped. Oh, yeah. It's And and as far as electric vehicles, um, I, I went, you know, I used up all the miles. Um, and it worked out uh, to... Um, Basically, it's 37 kilowatts per hundred or 37 miles of kilowatt usage uh, for every uh, 100 miles you drive. So if you work out with mid-Atlantic electric rates to go 100 miles in the Mach-E, it works out to between $5.55 to $6. How much uh, is that kilowatt? 
hour? Well, it's uh, that's I'm averaging 15 and a half cents a kilowatt hour, oh, which is typical through this whole region of the mid Atlantic. Boy, that's expensive. That's almost double what what I have up here. Yeah, and Seven this and is change. assuming this is assuming you're par- you're charging it in the middle of the day when the rates are the highest. But the point is, you can't drive a gasoline powered anything this size, right? A hundred miles for six dollars, especially no, now. That's true. Uh, so it's it's a deal, um, and you know, overall, it's 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 a it's a fine machine. It's well put together. It's it's um, well appointed. I think the interior could have been a little nicer. I'm sure a higher level uh, would have been, but uh, I, I was disappointed with it okay and and i was disappointed with it for a, enough that i wouldn't buy it if if i was out shopping for it i wouldn't buy it because the the center screen which is vertical right um it and it's big and it's very useful but you couldn't dim it down far enough at night it's mm-hmm. just too a little too bright um the screen also blocks the center air vent controls where you want to run that little thumb wheel to shut off the, yeah. the airflow. You have to twist your hand uh, behind it. And that's, you know, come on. <laughs> you, you, you know what and I it, think we'll see, Les? I think we'll see them rotatable. Some pole, I yeah. believe Polestar is doing that where you can rotate the display. Obviously, yeah, it's not available. That's right. Car. Or electrify the control. <laughs> Um, the panoramic roof, uh, does yours, yeah, yours had the panoramic roof. Yeah. There, there's no screen under yeah. that. And then, uh, you know, I drove this when it was 92 degrees here and yes, the air conditioning system cooled it off, but it's really hot inside. And uh, I just, you know, I want a screen. They, they did treat the roof. I did a little research on that when you told me about that earlier. In the it's week. a low E glass. I yeah. Know. Yeah, but uh, they do sell aftermarket screens, which I think oh, okay. I would have to, you know, I have to would have to get one. Um, did did I don't remember? Did you run into uh, frustration with the nav system? Uh, you know, to be honest, I don't think I had to use the nav system. Um, um, I deliberately uh, I needed to use it, and I deliberately used it instead of my uh, phone connected nav system okay it was it just wasn't terribly and that's a ford uh, sync system that's a pretty user standard, friendly standard yeah. thing you know yeah it put me a mile and a half away from where i wanted to go close enough <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, did, well, I walked uh, and uh and now you know how i am about the ride the smoothness of a ride sure. but um, you've never heard me say that my passengers complained about the ride okay and everybody did wow everybody said that's all wheel drive so it's heavier right um everybody said boy this thing is is choppy and harsh and clunky sounding underneath mm-hmm. um it really that alone would have made me not choose to buy one. Do you think it was uh, too certainly sporty? the all wheel drive version? Um, and, and, and that was just with the whisper mode, which is the softest. <laughs> Quiet, <yeah. laughs> the other modes you don't even want to know. So <laughs> overall um, it's a, it's a really impressive vehicle. It is a Mustang. Uh, it is fast. It looks it's good got, from outside. It's, it looks great from outside, uh, great visibility out yep. from inside. Um, but it, you know, it it just, it didn't appeal to me enough um, I'm not to a, make me want it. I remember that screen, like uh, having to move the slider for certain things and it took yeah. like two tries. I don't. I, I, I don't see why we have to eliminate buttons just because Elon Musk put a screen up. There. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and or, that's not anything about electric cars. It's just any car. No. I'd rather have a knob or a button to say, oh, there you go. There's the there's yeah. the I mean, uh, there's the defroster. It's a great electric car. Yes. Uh, it just as it is at the moment, it's not a great car. Gotcha. 
No, I, I understand. What was the price yeah. on yours? Fifty five one hundred uh, plus uh, eleven hundred for destination, which isn't a bad price. No, that's all wheel drive. And, uh, you know, but. Yeah, not that you can buy it for that <laughs> price. We're going to have a story next hour about uh, Farley, uh, the head of Ford, says people are ordering cars, and that is making a big difference. The dealers are not marking yeah. them up, so we'll talk about that. Well, thanks for that at-the-wheel review of the Mustang Mach-E all-wheel drive, Les Jackson. Time for me to say I'm Fred Staub. I'm Les Jackson. We're going to see you down the road. Bye. Cruise Control streams live every Saturday starting at 10 a.m. Eastern. Watch us live on Facebook and YouTube. Details are in this podcast's episode information.